Good afternoon all. Now I've got a couple of uh, one meter strips here with the APA 102 pixel addressable RGB LED. Now the APA 102 looks almost identical to the WS2812B. It's a five millimeter square. It has the red, green and blue LEDs on the die with a little driver chip that you can see there through the window. And of course it performs an identical function in that it can light up in a variety of different colors. But the similarities end there and there are really quite substantial differences in the way that you drive these LEDs. You can probably see one of them which is that uh, the WS2812B has a single data line. So this will be VCC up here, ground and this single one wire data line. The APA102 has two data lines, uh, clock and data, and it's driven in a very, very different way. And uh, the WS2812 is driven at a fixed clock frequency of uh, 800 kilohertz. The APA102 doesn't have a frequency specification, so in theory, you can drive it at any frequency. Now, I've got uh, three different data sheets for the APA102. This one, APA, Electronic Company Limited, Shenzhen, LED Color Opto Electronic Co Limited, and this one from Greeled. Uh, now the APA one sounds like it might be the original manufacturing company or design company. They say they've got a worldwide patent. So I'm gonna go with this data sheet uh, to try and work out how to drive this LED. Now this is the page with the communication protocol. Um, it's a simple, serial interface, data needs to be stable when the clock line goes high. So we can use the Arduino's uh, shift out function to send bytes. They go out MSB first, bit seven goes out first. And then the protocol is that we send a start frame. Here's the start frame, it's 32 bits, all zeros. Then we send an LED frame. Well, here's the LED frame. The first uh, three bits are ones. Then there's this global brightness uh, parameter, but I'm not going to use that for the moment. I'm going to set that all to ones, so it's full brightness. Then you send out the data for blue, then green, then red. And then you've got something called a lead frame. I think that's wrong. I think that's meant to be an end frame with 32 bits uh, of all ones. But this is extremely misleading, and I'll come to that later. So for the moment, let's just do something really simple. We'll send out a start frame, 32 bits, all zeros, and then we'll send out uh, an LED frame, 32 bits, all ones, which will set blue, green, and red to the maximum brightness, and we should be able to get one of these pixels to turn on. Now, just a quick word about these two strips. Uh, this black one I bought for $16.90. It's one meter, 30 LEDs per meter, so it has 30 LEDs on it and it has a connector here for uh, VCC ground clock and data, and also uh, wires to put external power into this, five volts, of course. Now this one um, I bought actually cheaper, and it has more LEDs. This is 60 LEDs per meter, um, because I bid on an auction and uh, happened to get it at a reasonable price. This one has an additional connector on the end. I think the idea is you can daisy chain them, but since I'm not likely to want to do that. I think I'm going to take this off and then use this to connect um, the strip to my Arduino and then I can interchangeably drive either one of these two strips. So here's the item I bought full price. It's showing as uh, $17.10 today, £11.42. It's the APA 102 RGB LED strip and there's a range of options on length, uh, number of LEDs per meter, whether it's waterproof or not, I didn't bother with that. And the color of the PCB, mine was black and came from Invotech. Now the white strip I got from this seller, Jansu 1984, and it's a 60 LEDs white, one meter, non-waterproof. This is their buy it now price, $22.99, but I bid on one of their auction items and got it for a little bit less than that. So uh, as I say, I'm gonna cut this connector off. Now what's this, this is the socket and then uh, put some pins on here to plug it into my Arduino. So let's start cutting this bit of insulation off. 
and uh, find some DuPont pins to uh, wire onto the ends of these wires. So for power, I'm going to use this uh, 5 volt power bank with some lithium cells in it. I've got that connected to a 2.1 millimeter socket, which I've wired onto the VCC and ground uh, extra connections that they provide. And then here into the data connector, I'm going to connect uh, this, which came off the other end. And I've only connected it to three pins because there's no point attempting to try and draw uh, VCC from the Arduino. It's going to hit the current limit very, very quickly. So I'm just going to take ground, uh, clock and data, whichever way around those are, and feed them into this part of the strip. So let's see how we go. Now, because I want a way of sending individual bytes uh, from the Arduino here to the APA102 strip, I thought I'd repurpose my uh, musical organ, which I'm building uh, using this MPR121, is it? The touch sensor module. Um, I've got the piezo so that I can have a beep and I've set it up so that I've got uh, a byte of zeros on that coin. These are the uh, Japanese 50 yen coins and a byte of all ones on this coin. So zero, one. Now the data sheet says that you need to put in a start frame of four bytes of zeros. So that's four bytes of that and then four bytes of ones We'll turn on the first LED. Let's see if it works. And it does. Fantastic. Now, what if I want to turn the LED back off? Well, I need a start frame of uh, four bytes of zero. So let's put that in. Four of those. And then I need a, an LED frame. Now, the first byte will be all ones. These three bits have to be ones anyway. This is the global brightness variable which I'm not using so I'm going to use ones for that so let's put that in and then blue green and red will be all zero so let's put those in and that does indeed turn the LED off now what about making the first LED go red well I'll need a start frame 32 bits of zeros and then I'll need uh, a byte of ones here zero zero one for red so byte of ones zero zero one and the first led lights up red let's try uh, green so that'll be one zero one zero let's try that four zeros one zero one zero that lights up green oh go on then might as well do blue one one zero zero four zeros for the start frame one one zero zero and that lights up blue so this is certainly working now I'm not putting in an end frame and that's because I don't have to yet. Now what about the Arduino code for this? Well don't worry about what most of this is. It's the code for the MPR121 touch sensor. All I've added are a couple of pin mode commands here to set pins 12 and 13 to outputs. Uh, they're the two pins being used for clock and data into the strip. And then there are two lines here. Now this number here uh, I is the number coming back from the touch, set, touch sensor. So if I is a zero, shift out on pins 12 and 13, MSB first, a byte with all the bits at zero, so that's hexadecimal zero, zero. Um, if I is a one, in other words, if you touch the second coin, uh, shift out again on pins 12 and 13, MSB first, a byte of FF, so that's all the bits as ones, and that's it. So all you have to send to the APA 102 um, are bytes of either all zeros or all ones, at least in my example here. I mean, if you send uh, bytes with different values, you can set the brightnesses of the R, G and B levels, but I'm just sending uh, bytes with all ones. So I'm turning on either red or green or blue or a combination of those at full brightness. Now, when I first started playing with this, I assumed that this strip would be one giant shift register, so that whatever I put into the first LED would then move on to the second LED when the next four bytes came in. But actually, that's not what happens. Look what happens if I try and make the first three LEDs red, green, and blue. Now, I've jotted down on my sheet here some crib numbers for RGB, uh, 1001, 1010, and 1100. So let's 
do the four bytes of zero to uh, start the sequence. So red is 1001, uh, green is 1010. Now notice that the green light doesn't come on immediately. It will when I press the, press the next key. Uh, 1100, and then I need to enter something else to get the um, the next LED on. And I'll come back to that later on because the, that's another quirk of this particular chip. Um, interesting, uh, fully understandable, but just a bit weird. So there we are, red, green, blue. Now I put those in in the sequence red, green, blue. So the first LED's value didn't shift down to the second LED and so on. What happened is the first LED took in its four bytes and set itself to that color. And then it kind of built a bypass around itself and said, okay, well, I'm done. I'm not doing anything else. I'm going to ignore all further data and just pass it on to the next LED. Once this LED had received its four bytes, it kind of locked up, built a bypass and said, I'm not doing anything else. I'm going to pass all further data onto the next LED. And that's how this thing works. It isn't a giant shift register. It's a small shift register per LED. And then the LEDs just say, bye bye, I'm not doing anything else. I'm just handing the data on. It's a very interesting system. So now let's um, clear these three LEDs, put them back to the off state. Um, to do that, I need to send this uh, start frame thing, this 32 bits, all zero. So let's do that. So that's four bytes. Uh, then I need to put in values to turn all these LEDs off. Incidentally, that four byte sequence effectively does almost like a carriage return. It, it resets the address that we're currently talking to back to be the beginning of the strip. In fact, all it does is it tells this first LED um, start accepting new data. So let's put in one zero zero zero. Uh, the three zeros there are for um, blue, green, and red. One zero 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 my extra byte, and that's turned all the LEDs off. Now the next thing I do, I really ought to explain why after turning on the first LED, so let's do four ones, why after another four ones, the second LED doesn't come on. And there's a very good reason for that.